guys thirsty gogeta back at it again and uh it, i know it's kind of weird for me posting on sunday um so yeah like i said in the previous video that there was gonna be a little complications and well that kind of went through yeah and well let, let's just get past to that and yeah i bet you're wondering why what am i doing here today well since I love Transformers, I love Transformers, been growing up with it since I, forever, I would like to do a Transformers movie review, like, series. And why don't we start off with the first live-action Transformers? So, yeah, this, you know, this series is going to consist of Transformers 1, 2, 3, like the, the entire Michael Bay uh, part of the franchise, and the Bumblebee movie, and the 1986, uh, yeah, 1986 Transformers film. And uh, I will also um, probably like have thoughts or like a little wish list for Transformers Rise of the Beasts will, that will be released next year. And, um, yeah, let's get on to the review. So, the way this review is going to be sectioned is into six little sections. Well, sort of little, I guess. The first uh, one is going to be the namesakes of the namesake of the film, the Transformers themselves. The second, humans. Third, story and the plot. Fourth and fifth are going to be pros and cons. <laughs> and six is going to be my overall score of the film. So... Let's get on with the first film. Now, with the Transformers, the namesake of the film. Um, their overall characters... Okay, let's start off with, like, each named Transformer. First of all, Optimus Prime. I think, um... There wasn't... There's not much to really... I mean, like, yeah, there is stuff there... Like, he's stern, stoic, and he obviously, like, cared for his Autobots whenever he saw Jazz, like, freaking dismantled by Megatron. But... Eh, this was the first film, so there wasn't much to... Like, this was their first film, and every first film is like a, a little test project to see, hey... Where are we going to go from from here? So I can't... I don't really want to, like, ultimately criticize Optimus Prime in this film. But it was serviceable. Bumblebee. Of course, Bumblebee, he is saturated everywhere due to him becoming really famous in these films. And, um... <laughs> of course, as a kid, he was my favorite, uh, favorite Transformer. But nowadays, Megatron is my favorite Transformer. Um, Bumblebee's... Uh, this is when his whole voice box uh, destroyed thing started in this film. And uh, I... This is uh, was my first uh, introduction. This was my introduction to Transformers, so I had no past knowledge at the time about, like how different this was compared to like the 80s and everything until I started you know, I watched it when I got older and started watching other Transformers media and so I didn't really know what to think of Bumblebee when I was a kid I always thought that he was just cool he turned into a yellow Camaro whoop de doo but now I'm just like um yeah he peed on the guy <laughs> so there isn't too much but um overall character i mean he's supposed to be the uh the transformer to kind of for the humans to connect with for us all as an audience to connect with the transformers themselves so yeah from what they were going from there it wasn't all too bad but i mean it wasn't like Ultimately, gut wrenching whenever he was caught by uh, Sector Seven. So I 
didn't really feel like as a adult now i i didn't really feel like sorry for bumblebee but i mean i knew what they were going for there um jazz yeah it, it was a little stereotypical of how he was in the film and but also i'm kind of mad that he got killed off in the first film <laughs> it kind of pissed me off a little bit not even a little bit it pissed me off a lot because jazz is one of my favorites and um his overall character was just um i mean when it came to all the transformers in this film the like it's just the characters were like the characteristics of them and just like how they were personality wise like uh Ironhide's the tough one, Ratchet is the serious one, Optimus is the even more serious one, uh, Jazz is the cool one, Bumblebee is the carefree teenager, Megatron is the ultimate destruct you know, destructive type, alongside with the other Decepticons, they're just ultimate destructive, get shit done, we're ultimate monster shit, and th that was just really all the personalities, I mean all the Decepticons really, they were just... They were just monsters, and that it was a reoccurring theme in all the Transformer films. Like, they were just there to get killed off, and eh, the Decepticons could have been dealt with a hell of a lot better. And the Autobots, eh, they were given a little bit of personality in this film. That one was sort of stereotypical a little bit. And... Ironhide, I mean, tough guy, really. And then Ratchet was a serious medical type, that's it. So, personality-wise, the Transformers weren't given a lot in these films. They were only, like, given little snippets, but it was just not enough to really call it good. But at least in this film, it was decent. I mean, it was serviceable, and it wasn't overly cringy from my point of view but i mean i mean it wasn't all that bad now two designs of the transformers now this was where uh obviously michael bay started to, uh, to uh say oh i would just love to like make a film or whatever with the blocky original designs and just show how lame it would look and, uh, yeah, the Bumblebee movie just made his statement wrong. <laughs> just, it, he was just wrong. Because the G1 designs worked well in live action. But I will do a review on Bumblebee, like I said. So I'll leave that for another review. But, um, going through all the designs, Optimus Prime, I mean, you can't really screw up Optimus like it, it, he's just a design that you can't make him not look recognizable he's got the mouth plate and he's got the antennae and he's he just always looks recognizable but the flames I mean yeah a lot of people are like oh the flames it goes on hot rod I I, I as a kid I thought it was cool but right now, nowadays, I just like, yeah, cool, sure, flames. <laughs> but I know why they did the flames. It was uh, because they couldn't just do red and blue due to the cameras that they had back then. Um, they were, uh, There are actual like uh, documentaries where they talk about that. Uh, Bumblebee, this is where his muscle car designs started like coming to mainstream and started affecting all the other bumblebee designs and uh it was different it was a different type of design compared to the 80s films but i mean i know michael bay himself was <coughs> excuse me <coughs> jeez anyways i know michael bay was always going for these like Ooh, totally radical, awesome, awesome, awesome designs. And didn't really like any of the, the, the 
older Transformer designs, and overall, just Michael Bay just did not give a shit about being faithful to any other source Transformer source material, like uh, Bumblebee or probably how the Jesus Christ. Hey, <coughs> jeez, trying to talk. God damn. Anyways, try to be like faithful to the source material like the nowadays Transformer films are going to be. So obviously Bumblebee looked very different to how he was. Same thing with all the other Transformers. Well, except for Optimus and Jazz. Jazz looked pretty faithful, if you ask me. I mean, he the only thing that really threw me off was just uh, how short he was compared to the rest of the Autobots and his hands. That, that, that was... That was it, but everything else was fine. It was good about Jazz's design. I loved it. Bumblebee's design started a new era of, well, Bumblebee. And it kind of inspired, and it did inspire the Bumblebee movie design. So, I didn't mind it. I actually like it. Um, Ratchet's design, um... Here's the thing I gotta say about the Transformer films from... <coughs> Oh, God, why am I coughing so goddamn much all of a sudden? <coughs> Are you done? Jeez, okay. Anyways, the reason I, um, I didn't really like how the Transformers were in these films was because it, they're supposed to be robots in disguise. And they're mostly concept vehicles and everything of the sort. And it's not really in disguise, mostly for the Autobot side. The Decepticons don't never really gave a shit about being in disguise. They just like suited their needs with a Earthling vehicle. I'm pretty sure if all of them wanted to stay in their Cybertronian vehicle forms, they would have done it like Megatron did many, many times. So. I'm just saying that it's not really in disguise because at the time that type of Camaro was not out and that's not really in dis uh, disguise. Now, his older vehicle mode, uh, Camaro mode for Bumblebee was in disguise. Trying not to cough again because I'm pretty sure audiences would be annoyed by that and I, I am already annoyed by that. Okay, I'm not going to cough. Good. Now, for Jazz, yeah, it, just all the vehicles were just so flashy, and it was just like, it's not really in disguise. I know he was trying to go for coolness, but I mean, not, I'm not talking about Jazz, I'm talking about Michael Bay. He, he he just didn't give a shit. I liked what the Bumblebee movies kind of gave. Like, Bumblebee was trying to be in disguise. Optimus was being in disguise. They were just regular run-of-the-mill vehicles. Now, the Decepticons, they normally do not care if they're in disguise or not. So, that's just how they are. Now, if we're talking about, like, Decepticons, like, Soundwave or something, yeah. But, what can we do? Michael Bay doesn't give a shit about being faithful to Transformers. Now, for Ironhide, I think that big truck suited him for, like, being gruff and tough. It was a giant GMC top kick. I think that really suited him. And same thing with Ratchet. I mean, I mean, ambulances, well, they're always going to be big and flashy because that's just how they're supposed to be. But I think they could have gone for a uh, more... Not exactly totally run-of-the-mill ambulance that you normally see, but I'm talking like more of a bigger top-notch one, like how the concept art for Transformers was. I think that actually suited Ratchet. And in unpopular opinion, I preferred that concept art design over what we got, because to me it just looked a little bit more like Ratchet. Now, if they tweaked it a little bit to make it look a little more like G1, then I would have been alright with it. Like, the face did really need a change, yeah. <laughs> it did. But I would have preferred something along the lines of that design. 
Now, Rat, now, Ironhide, he was supposed to be gruff and tough. He looked muscular. He had big cannons. He kind of had fusion cannon like what Megatron had in the 80s. But, it, I mean, they wanted to make him gruff and tough, big cannons, weapon specialist. So, obviously, it looked very different. And uh, I guess it was just how it was supposed to be for how he was in the film. So that just covers the Autobots. Optimus, not really that bad. Bumblebee, not that bad. Jazz loved it. Ironhide made sense for the film. And Ratchet, I mean, it looked okay. Now Megatron, um, I think it looked too scrappy of the design. If they like made it look a little more plated. Like how the second film made it, or my favorite out of the whole Michael Bay uh, quintilogy, I guess you can call it that. Um, Transformers 5 Megatron was my favorite design. Because Transformers Prime Megatron, that was my favorite, that, that is my favorite Megatron design. And the unreleased uh, Marauder Megatron from Transformers Animated, that is an awesome design and I love it. And Cybertronian animated op you know, Megatron. I love that design. I love it. And I do like the helicopter mode. Transformers animated op you know, Megatron. <laughs> I keep on wanting to say Optimus Prime. <laughs> but I preferred Marauder and Cybertronian version of animated Megatron. But I'm getting off topic. In Starscream, ah, uh, the chicken legs and knuckle dragger forearms kind of caught me off guard. I mean, like, as a kid, I didn't really care, but once I sat there and looked at it, when I, <laughs> now, I'm just like, what the hell? He looks like a big-ass Dorito, but, um, if they fix the leg, like, it, it's a cool design. All these Transformer designs are cool in the like overall action scenes, which is mostly what these Transformers are used for, it's just, they're not really used for character, they're just used for the humans to react to, so these most you know, these films should have been humans reacting to Transformers, that's what the movie should have been called. <laughs> But at least this film kind of was like, you saw seeds of success behind it. It was just like, there was something that could have been plucked out. You, there was just actual effort put into this movie other than all the other movies that were just overall cash grabs. And uh, Megatron, just scrappy, Starscream, looked like a knuckled dragger, go fucking gorilla bird. Brawl? I didn't really mind Brawl's design. I mean, honestly, I tank, tough looking. I mean, that, that suits Brawl. <laughs> Big green tough guy. I wish these Decepticons weren't supposed to be monstrous and just not talking, just there for cannon fodder and just dead afterwards. Because I wanted more like personality out of the Decepticons in these films and just that's not what we got and we just got jokes and shit and that, that was really it barricade was uh that was an yeah, interesting design i i actually liked it. it it started a new role for barricade's designs further along in the transformers franchise so i don't really mind Barricade's design. I really like it. My favorite Barricade design from the movies is from The Last Night, even though he showed up for like five seconds. But anyways, Barricade looked great. Brawl looked great. Bone Crusher, that was a very different design, and I still like it. I like the design. It's just Bone Crusher was a Constructicon and not some random uh, destructive wheel yeah, roller skating just Decepticon but I still like the design and the fight that he had with uh, Optimus on the road Blackout that was also a design that wasn't really fucked up either and um, he was big gray tough helicopter 
I mean, that, that's basically how he was back in G1. Now, it's just my only problem was with Septagons, like I said earlier, it's just I wish they were given personalities and they just didn't really talk. <laughs> Scorpionok, I mean, it made sense that he was a scorpion, of course. But it was new to the table that he was kind of like a partner minicon how, no, to Blackout. That was very interesting. I liked that. And same thing with Frenzy. He was with Barricade. And as you know, if you don't know, Soundwave was initially supposed to be in this film, and he was going to be, uh, he was going to be a helicopter, but he got his place taken by both Soundwave and Blackout. So, there's that. That's why Frenzy was in the film and he wasn't. But hey, Soundwave showed up in the second film. But we're not going to be talking too much about that. So character you know, characters, you know, characterization of the Transformers, the Autobots were oh, and like they were pretty mid. I mean, they weren't horrible, but they weren't exactly great. Um, the voice acting direction, Hugo Weaving as Megatron wasn't all that bad, but I was just, like, told, or from what I've seen, how he was, he was just, like, either, he was just there for the, for the check, really, he, he, he wasn't there to just play as Megatron, that's why I was kind of happy that they got Frank Welker back in the projects, but that was just for the last two films until they rebooted it. Now, the voice direction with Optimus Prime, Peter Cullen, amazing, amazing. Can't can't deny it, amazing. Bumblebee didn't have a voice. Uh, Ironhide sounded tough, and the Ironhide voice actor played as Barricade, both sounding very demanding, but more you know, one's more gruff and tough, one's more demanding. That being Barricade. And the rest of the Decepticons, except for Starscream and Megatron and Barricade, were the only ones who really had a voice, well, except for Frenzy, but he mostly spoke Cybertronian. Except for that one line he said, oh shit, when he got his head chopped off by his own blade. Now, uh, characters that he's, yeah, for humans. Sam Witwicky, yeah, he was a jokester from time to time, but, I mean, you saw some real... You saw some, like, real, like, seeds of development in these human characters. Like, this is, like, kind of going for all of them. Not, okay, not necessarily all of them. Some of them were just there to be there or, like, overacting. And it was just kind of yeah, mid. I mean, th that's kind of how this whole film is, really. But I, that's just for the over sc overall score later. So, Sam Witwicky, I think he was pretty okay for this film. I didn't mind him. The humans in this film weren't all that bad. I think my favorite character from this film was uh, Linux. I did not mind Linux. I actually liked how he was. He was uh, always dementing, like he was a guy who wanted to get the job done, and he was always trying to protect others, and... I did not really mind Linux at all. I actually liked him a lot. And and apps or ops apps, I don't know. He was he was kind of funny at time to time, yeah. And uh I actually like his uh Optimus Pro uh, I know uh, I forgot his actor's name. Man He's so cool. How could I forget his actor's name? But he did an Optimus Prime impression. I I laughed. I loved it. I loved it. And um, anyways, uh, I think he, he was a good partner for Lennox. And I think those two, that little character dynamic was, no, that was my overall favorite. And uh, Sam's parents, um... I mean, his dad was okay. I didn't really mind his dad. His mom was a little overbearing, but that's kind of really how she is in the first two films. His dad, I never really minded. And Michaela, 
No, by, you know, of course, Megan Fox. <laughs> you bitch. Your ass. <laughs> Quite literally. Every boy in or every man's freaking pants were tight in that theater when they first saw that. <laughs> I, uh, as a boy, I was just like, I mean, she's kind of high, yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, her character was... Uh, honestly better in this film than she was in the f second film and then of course she never showed up in the other films but on uh, overall like I think her like at she had like a little Jekyll and Hyde thing going on like she was a person who was like hiding a little like little something that was going on in her personal life like her father going to prison and such, and she like knew how to deal with cars and everything. That's cool. And her overall like char you know, characterization and her overall plot with Sam wasn't really forced. I mean, I I know it's that nerd gets the girl kind of thing going on, but it's one of those not so bad ones though. And, um, all the other characters in the film, like Angela, Angela Jolie's dad, <laughs> I mean, I guess he was just there doing a normal general crap. <laughs> I, I guess that's what you can call that. And, um, that Australian hacker girl, can't really remember her name, was, um, I mean... She was there, I guess. <laughs> That's mostly how all these human characters are in these films. They're just there. But at least with this film, they actually tried. <laughs> they actually tried. But with the rest of the other films... Ugh. I mean, I could end all five reviews with Michael Bay's Transformer films right here, right now. But I actually want to like get onto my... Like grieving my disappointment with the, the two through five. So, anyways, that's with humans. Uh, the main characters like Sam, Lennox, Mac uh, Michaela, and I. I didn't mind those characters at all. I didn't mind Sam's dad and mo his mom was a little overbearing, and the other characters were just there to crack jokes and such. The story, the plot. Now, the cube, which is the AllSpark, goes to Earth, uh, crash lands to Earth, and the Decepticons try to get it to create a whole freaking army to take over the whole galaxy. And Megatron crash landed in ice, and Sector Seven took him to <laughs> took him to the freaking uh, to to the dam. Damn, fourth chaos emerald. I hate how that joke came to my mouth, mind in the last second. Hoover Dam. There we go. I also forgot the name. I was. They took him to the Hoover Dam, and Sam just living his life until Transformers come in and start like causing mayhem left and right. Bay him. I mean, bay him. Because that's just going to be a recurring theme in these films. Just bay him. Just boobs, butts, and explosions. That's these films. <laughs> <laughs> that is these films. And um, Sam trying to impress Michaela. And then Sam, you know, like, yeah. And then Sam trying uh, get in a car. Ends up to be Bumblebee. Decepticons causing, well, trying to find their leader. And trying to find the AllSpark through... Sam, Bumblebee and Barricade duke it out, and uh, the other Autobots come to Earth. They talk to Sam about shit, about the AllSpark and Megatron got to get trying to get it and transform all Earth's you know, Earth's machines into and rebuild a whole army. And then uh, we go, <laughs> we bumble around Sam's house for a little bit until S Sector Seven freaking kidnaps. No, they didn't kidnap, but they freaking arrest people. 
and take them, <laughs> try to take them away, but the Autobots stop them. They, we do a chase scene with Optimus Prime. Bumblebee take, gets taken by Sector 7. We're supposed to be sad because he peed on the guy. And he's being taken. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm getting... <laughs> I'm so sad. He peed on the guy. <laughs> Just kidding. Anyways, um... And then we're uh, on uh, on our way to the Hoover Dam. Oh, and uh, during uh, after, you know, before all the Transformers start coming along, we're figuring you know, we're trying to figure out like what the hell is going on in the fucking uh, uh, with frenzy just causing a freaking uh, I don't know. You can just call it a uh, technological explosion. Excuse me. And uh, with Blackout, of course, he attacked the uh, base in Qatar, and Lennox and his crew fought uh, fought off Scorponok, and all that shit happened. Uh, awesome summary that I'm making here, right? And uh, they uh, all our main characters meet up with Sector Seven, uh, including Lennox and his gang, meet up at, at the Hoover Dam, and you know, Sam tells Sector Seven that they got Megatron in their little quarters. And, uh, yeah, and shit goes to fuck real fucking quick. They use the, no, they f- see that they have the Allspark in the Hoover Dam alongside with Megatron. And the Decepticons start causing may- you know, mayhem in the Hoover Dam. And then they figure out that Bumblebee's not a bad guy. And then they release him. The Autobots are on their way to the Hoover Dam. Megatron gets released out of the ice and meets up with Starscream and, uh, y- you are either lying or you're stupid, Starscream. I'm stupid. I'm stupid. Get that G1 reference. Anyways. Um, then all our characters start meeting up in uh, Mission City and where big fights start happening. Big freaking explosions. Actually, before that, there's a street uh, scene where Optimus and Bone Crusher duke it out, and then Optimus fucking decapitates him, which is gonna be a recurring theme in this in this series because Optimus just hate and like freedom is the right for all sentient beings except Decepticons. They must fucking die, Sam. Like what the hell, Optimus? Like he wasn't as bad in. Uh, in this film, but when it comes down to the other films, <laughs> uh, second film and moving on, <laughs> oh, it gets bad. It gets real bad. Optimus turns into a fucking grade A murderer, war criminal. You know, like you start like, were the Decepticons really wrong? It, it's just it's bad. But anyways, back to this film. Um, Optimus is still on his way to Mission City while the uh, Bumblebee fucking loses his feet. Uh, Sam has the freaking fumbling around with the cube. Oh yeah, did I tell you that uh, Sam took the cube because Bumblebee uh, turned it small in the Hoover Dam? Yeah, for yeah, I missed that out, didn't I? Anyways, I'm like going to get so many great freaking constructive criticism after my little summary here like this is going to be the worst part of the video anyways bumblebee gets his feet fucking blown up by starscream and then the decepticons start like a whole round assault on the on mission city um optimus uh, megatron arrives fucking murders (laughs) jazz and uh (laughs) Yeah, we're supposed to be sad, and yeah, well, like, we gotta kill off the black guy first. Yeah, Megatron's freaking whitewashed, motherfucker. Racism, fucking idiots. Anyways, um, yeah, Jacob shares his. Uh, oh wait, I just shared my name. I think I shared my name many a times before. Yeah, racism is stupid. Epic silence here. Anyways, um...
Megatron fucking kills Jazz and uh, starts uh, getting ready to assault everybody else until Optimus Prime comes along. And then Megatron fucking flies towards Optimus and they start flying into buildings and shit. Megatron beats the shit out of Optimus. And uh, I think uh, before all that shit happened, uh, Bumblebee killed a uh, freaking Brawl. And also Starscream was beating the shit out of uh, Ironhide and... Uh, Ratchet, if the Decepticons planned this right, oh my god, they would have destroyed the Autobots. Oh my god, these Decepticons, like, tower over the Autobots and have more power, obviously. Because in the film, Megatron was just tossing Optimus Prime around like a fucking ragdoll. And Starscream was soloing fucking... Ratchet and Ironhide, he could have killed them on the fucking spot right there, but didn't. And then you had... Okay, Optimus had that kill with Bone Crusher, yeah, but then you could have had Barricade, who was still alive, uh, freaking get the drop on freaking Bumblebee again. And then you could have had Brawl beat the shit out of Jazz. Like, seriously, this... and. Freaking Blackout probably could have just helped Long. <laughs> it's just like, seriously, Decepticons could have kicked the Autobots' asses. But no, plot armor. <laughs> Sam starts fumbling around the city with the cube. And Megatron chases him after beating the shit out of Optimus. And since uh, we got like two Decepticons dead already... Uh, <laughs> As Megatron is starting to chase uh, Sam around a building, um, fucking like hit, no, almost hits him with his flail. Sam starts falling to the ground. Optimus catches him, and then we they both fall to the ground alongside with Megatron. And then, uh, well, Megatron continues to beat the shit out of Optimus Prime, and uh, yeah, a whole airstrike starts happening, and Starscream tries to deal with that, but that that didn't work out. Now, didn't it? And uh, Megatron was being blown up left and right, and, um, yeah. Sam get, uh, shoves the cube in, inside of, uh, freaking Megatron's spark, and then he fucking dies. So, you got three Decepticons dead here, and that's, like, literally almost all the entire team, except for freaking Barricade and Starscream. So Barricade obviously goes to hiding because freaking Megatron's dead. And then uh, Starscream goes to space. The Autobots uh, go along with the uh, meet up back with the humans in the middle of the city. And uh, Ironhide picks up uh, Jazz's dead body and goes up to Optimus and saying we couldn't save him. And oh, Jazz was literally what Optimus Prime said. And... Uh, they decided to stay on Earth. The, uh, the humans dumped the Decepticon remains into the uh, sea, and Bumblebee uh, stays with uh, stays with Sam and Michaela, and the Autobots uh, basically just live their new life on Earth. And then uh, that's basically just a basic summary of it. I mean, obviously there's like other crap going on, but that's just like the basic main summary of it. Oh, also Blackout fucking died. I forgot that. So you had four Decepticons dead. Yeah. He got killed by Lennox with a gren grenade launcher? I think it was grenade launcher. Please engage with this video and tell me. Anyways, the pros of this v movie... Obviously, this was the first movie they were going all, like, they were putting their all into this film. So, obviously, I'm not going to, like, bash on the film because this was just their first film. And they were trying their damnest. And it obviously shows, like, you can see the seeds of success in there. They just needed to be pushed a little. And they probably would have done a hell of a lot better. But, obviously, that didn't fucking happen. Um, the characterization of you know, just overall characters in the film were just dealt with better in this in this film than they were with the uh, later films. It seemed like they actually cared about what the <laughs> humans had to say, and obviously the Transformers were just like 
I know they were just uh, there for the humans to react to, but at least they somewhat tried. And uh, the animation and the uh, and the animation, oh my god, the CGI and everything is just beautiful. That's just gonna be how it is throughout all these films. They you know, CGI is beautiful. God damn, this video is forty minutes long. My oh my goodness. I'm going to try to wrap this up. The, and um, the characterization was just handled better in this film. The cons. <laughs> the Decepticons were j like the Transformers in general. They were just like there for the humans to react. And I was just like, eh, this is like, I think they could have been handled like as characters. They're characters. And I just, but at least with this film, they like sort of tried that out. With but just mainly with the Autobots, the Decepticons were just there as monsters, and um, I think some of the characterization that was like with the secondary in ta you know, protagonist, I think they could have been dealt with a lot better. Just like not with the overacting and everything, I, it's just eh, it was a little cringy, and. Um, the jokes weren't always landing, but I mean, they're better than what we had in the later film. So then it's better than that. So my overall score of the film, I'd give it, um, I'd give it a six out of 10. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't great, but it wasn't exactly bad either, but it wasn't in the middle. It was, it was a little better. And, I like the film. I like the film a lot. And it's what started me in the Transformer hype train. So, there's that little nostalgic feel for it. And uh, that is just really my overall opinion about the Transformers 1 film. It's just, it was it was alright. It wasn't all that bad. I saw, you know, there were seeds of success there. It's just, uh, the... It just didn't get plucked out. It was just like left to die. They just, it turned from like maybe to an awesome, compelling storytelling to just normal cash grab blockbuster. And, and that, that is just turned to a disappointment. But this was, you know, this film was literally all that was going to be good out of the uh, entire Bay films. Which I am glad that the Bumblebee movie was a soft reboot. <laughs> I mean, they said it was a gonna it was a reboot, and then now they're not really talking about it. But I'm like, as if oh, marketing. But we already know that it's a soft reboot already. I mean, Rise of the Beasts and the Bumblebee film just do not fit in the timeline. So, uh, just different characters different stories it just doesn't fit with the bay films at all so obviously it's a reboot but anyways that is just my overall opinion about this film and uh, i like i hope you like comment and subscribe to more of my videos and um i really hope you like this new series that i'm starting because i really like to uh for you guys to see just more videos other than just freaking Minecraft. Like, good lord. Like, just nothing but Minecraft. <laughs> and, um, anyways, like, like I said, like, comment, and subscribe for more of me. And this has been Thirsty Gogeta signing out. Peace.